This tiny board can pull exactly the voltage I want from any USB-C power supply. No laptop charger required. In this video, I will show you the schematic, show you how I did the PCB design, and prove that it works so you can build your own programmable USB-C power board. But first, a quick word from the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. I highly recommend PCBWay. They make ordering prototypes and assemble boards fast, affordable, and hassle-free. So whether you're just testing your very first design or scaling up to full production runs, PCBWay offers a wide range of options to fit your needs. The easy to use online platforms let you upload your Gerber files, select your board specification and get an instant quote. Plus, they provide excellent customer support to help you through the process. I've used PCBWay myself for many projects and their quality and turnaround times are impressive. Big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video and supporting makers like us. Now let's get started with the video. Before we go through the schematic and the PCB design, let me give you a quick overview of the board itself. So at the heart of the board, we have a TPS25730. I've selected a version which needs a external power switch. You can get one with an integrated switch as well, but this component is the external power switch. We have a interface for the I2C over here. We have two outputs from the IC. They are basically a plug event and plug side indicators for microcontrollers or anything that's connected there. And finally, we have the output from this board, which can give you five, nine, 12, 15 or 20 volts depending on the capability of the charger or the device that's plugging into the USB-C socket. On the back side, it's fairly empty, just some tracks. It is a two layer board. On the top section of the top side of the board, you see we have got a bunch of switches. So top right is ADC in two, top left is ADC in one, which are used for voltage control. And the bottom two switches are used for current control. So depending on the switch positions, the IC will request different voltage and current settings from the USB source. So essentially that's everything on the board. Obviously it's quite simple. I've done this board so that I can use this design block for future projects and basically replace those massive switches with a fixed voltage going into the ADC pins to control the voltage I need. The schematic itself is quite simple. We have a USB-C socket which is coming in and I've connected all the power pins together, you can see, and that is the VBUS, which goes directly to the VBUS pin on the IC. Now I've used the data sheet of this component heavily to kind of influence my design. And basically we have three capacitors over here. We need to make sure that we keep the capacitance below 10 microfarads and the recommended value was 4.7 microfarads. And then we've got some smaller value caps for the higher frequencies. On this board, I'm not using the USB DN or the USB DP. So that is not going anywhere. The CC lines from the USB-C connector need to connect to the IC. And that basically internally will tell the USB source side what power what voltage and what current to deliver. I'm using the IC version with an external switch. You can get another version with a switch that's integrated. So that's called the TPS25730D. These ICs weren't available from the source that I use. So I ended up going with this one. So we need an external switch, which is this component over here. The switch itself is controlled by the IC. So that's gate VBUS and gate VSYS. So these two pins will drive these two MOSFETs. The USB-C power delivery IC, this one has two regulators built in and they provide 3.3 and 1.5 volts. So I don't believe the 1.5 volts is used anywhere uh, for the circuit. However, I am using the 3.3 volt regulator to kind of power my potential dividers, which are basically the switches on the top side. All of these values were obtained from a evaluation board that TI also do, but I wanted to make my own version of the board, which was smaller and hopefully a little bit cheaper as well. So these uh, potential dividers and the outputs from them go into the ADC inputs over here. So I think I've already mentioned that ADC in one and ADC in two control the voltage. So ADC in one is for the minimum voltage and ADC in two is for the maximum voltage. Now I think this IC has a limitation in that if your USB source can provide five volts or nine volts, there's no way with these controls to set it so that you get five volts from the board. So you can set this to zero and set this to zero, which will basically mean that you have a input range of five to nine and then your power delivery source. And in my case, my power delivery source was able to supply five volts and nine volts. So I was getting nine volts for the board. Now, if I plugged it into my PC, I was getting five volts. 
So that limitation, I think you can overcome if you use the I2C interface on the IC. The output voltage is obtained from pin 19. And you can see I've got some filtering caps on here. So 10 microfarads, 10 microfarads, and a 10 nanofarads, which goes to the two pins that I showed you earlier. So this is the PCB design. You can see it's relatively simple. I've tried to keep my capacitors and everything as close as possible to the IC. Obviously, I'm not taking the USB data lines on this board, but if I was, then I might need to change this design around a little bit. These are the external MOSFETs. Obviously, they're driven by the IC, which is on the center over here, and the output is on this side. The two event um, outputs, so plug event and the plug side, I've basically sent that to a header pin so if we do need to check that in the future we can do and then i've added an interface for the i squared c as well just in case the um, setup that i have with the switches doesn't work as intended then i can basically control the ic with i squared c but i've no issues with the board working as i'm about to show you now so i'm just about to test my board um, i'm testing it with this USB C power supply that you see over here it is capable of delivering five volts with three amps 9 volts with 3 amps, 15 volts with 2.66 amps, and 20 volts with 2 amps of current. So this is my source for the test I'm about to do. And I have a multimeter that I'm using for reading the voltages. So with the setting that you see at the moment, pin 1 high, pin 1 high there, we can ignore these pins at the moment. We get a power supply of 9 volts. Now if I was to change the settings, Let's see, I put in uh, number three here. This will request 12 volts from the board. However, the USB charger I'm using does not supply 12 volts. So we're still getting nine volts in this case. Next, let's try the setting for 15 volts. So what I'm gonna do is change this pin to five. I'm gonna leave all of these off. I've still got this set to four and one over here. And if I probe this, you can see I'm getting 15 volts on my output. And lastly, I'm going to try the 20 volts from the charger. So for that, I need um, setting seven over here. I'm going to unplug this, plug it back in, and let's probe this. So you can see we are getting 20 volts from this board with uh, this setting over here. So this controls the minimum voltage. This controls the maximum voltage we're getting from our board. And I think generally the USB-C charger decides what to send out uh, for this kind of configuration within the range that we've set over here. So we can set up a minimum of five and then a maximum of 20. And you can see we are getting 20 volts from this board. Now the current limits are a different thing. And unfortunately I don't have high power resistors. So I will not be able to test the current limits, but but hopefully sometime in the future we can. So the reason I've designed this board because I want to use this section for different things on my projects and I will be able to replace these switches just tying the ADC inputs of this chip to the voltages that I need. Alternatively, I can talk to this IC with I2C as well and set all the voltages that I need. So this little design block will be very helpful in the future. So that's all I want to share with you today for this board. I wanted to say a huge thank you to all the channel members for supporting this channel and making these uh, PCB builds possible. Thank you.